welcome back everyone. Toysh is here and a very happy San Diego Comic Con 2024 to you all. Not to worry, we will be having full coverage of everything going on at Comic Con this year. But wouldn't you know it, it's my 30th year going to San Diego Comic Con officially. Did all the math. I thought last year was 30. This, without a doubt, this is the 30th year, but only my eighth year going under Toysh's. But. NECA Toys was nice enough. They sent over all their brand new STCC 2024 exclusives. And of course, we're going to start things off proper with an early look at their Captain Impressive action figure. Now, for those of you out there who are thoroughly confused, I see you. There's a few. This hails from Jim Henson's Dinosaurs, of which NECA Toys is, of course, making action figures for. In the episode entitled Earl, Don't Be a Hero, we see the birth of the hero Captain Impressive, a.k.a. Earl Sinclair, who has taken a job dumping nuclear waste into the river. And of course, he has to fall into said river and promptly starts wearing a mask and a costume because, yes, we officially jumped the shark because Earl now has superpowers. No joke. This is not a dream episode. This is not a what if episode. Earl Sinclair, the dinosaur, gets superpowers. And all of this is basically to impress baby Sinclair because he idolizes another action figure superhero. Wouldn't you know it, Earl Sinclair is found out by his boss and we say so takes control of the Captain Impressive name and forces Earl to then sell all these terribly dangerous products to children and laughs ensue. It's bat poop crazy, but we now have an official Captain Impressive action figure to put on our dinosaur shelves. And I gotta say, I love the artwork on this. That's very cool. I love seeing all of that. I love just the idea that this is the action figure being sold by We Say So Corp. That's just interesting. And it really does make for an interesting STCC exclusive. Gorgeous photos of the figure all over the box. Just love that it's part of the action fun hour. In the episode, they try to get Earl to do a kid's show as well. It, go watch the episode. It's on Disney+. Plus. It's very cool. Here's everyone involved with the creation of this figure. So thank you very much for that. And here's the barcode. But you're not going to need that. Because if you go to San Diego Comic-Con and you want this figure, you can grab it at the NECA booth. Or if you're not attending Comic-Con starting July 26th through the 28th, you can head over to the NECAstore.com and pick one up for yourself. So I'm telling you, don't kill yourself trying to grab this. If you want one, take your time, you'll get one. But in the meantime, this is going to be an absolute blast. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of We Say So brand coffee. This is an early look at the brand new from the Dinosaurs toy line, Captain Impressive, the STCC 2024 exclusive by NECA Toys. And now flying in out of the packaging, we have Earl Sinclair as Captain Impressive. And here's everything taken out of the box. Go very easy when cutting those twisty ties. You don't want to cut any of the fabric, of which this figure has a lot of, and a lot of extra hands. So you get ungloved dinosaur hands. They're all painted nicely. Hands we have seen with Earl before. But then you get some pearlescent white gloved hands that go along with the gloves that you can actually remove if you'd like. So open hands, fisted hands, item holding hands, everything that you would need. Now you also get an extra unmasked Earl Sinclair head portrait, which is funny to say when talking about dinosaurs. I'm telling you, go, go watch the episode. And it's largely going to be the exact same head portrait that we've seen with the original release of Earl. This time around, it just has some extra paint, a little bit better painted overall, just a lot more crisp, which is nice to see. But yes, it will be the same exact expression. Now, no Captain Impressive action figure would be complete without his Captain Impressive trachea plug, ages 12 and older, which, yes, looks like the product straight from the episode. Although, this is very thin. It's a thin piece of plastic. I wish it was thicker or just something that was glued or as fixed to something plastic because unfortunately it's way too thin for the grip that Earl has. So you're going to have to kind of figure it out, maybe stick it on something, put another piece of paper in with his grip. Don't want to have to do that, but I'm happy to say that if you have baby Sinclair, 
he will hold it, or better yet, you can just prop it up on his high chair. So yes, in that sense, it definitely works. Again, it's something that he wanted in the episode. Uh, hopefully, Earl signed it, but that looks good. That looks better. The actual action figure of Earl Sinclair as Captain Impressive is quite impressive, I will say. It's going to be the same exact body. They've just put all kinds of cloth goods all over him, which is awesome. And again, it's fun for an SDCC exclusive, but it's largely going to be the same exact Earl, of which now this is the third Earl we've gotten. But this, technically, you could say, is a different character. The head portrait has the white mask. I like that. His mouth is open. Although I will say, as my other dinosaur videos, I wish that you could articulate the mouth. It had a joint in there. He's got the Captain Impressive shield, as well as a division of We Say So Corp logo. That is funny. That's all painted on there. He's got his belts, enough to make a Rob Liefeld cry, and he's got... Again, the same exact articulation. Everything moves. The cloth goods. He's got peg holes on the bottom of his feet. The cloth goods don't hinder any articulation, which is nice. You're not going to get any hindrance, really, in the neck articulation. And I like that this piece right here is a separate piece to the entire figure. So you pop the head off, you can slip everything off. But it really is his cape, which is essentially Earl's shirt as a cape, but it has a bendy wire in there. It's not a really thick bendy wire. In fact, I didn't even notice it until I started. I was like, oh yeah, there's a bendy wire in there. So it's very thin, but it gets the job done. And for that alone, I totally dig the cape. That's a very cool to have that element with a bendy wire in it. The articulation, again, you won't have to worry too much about the cloth. You just kind of have to worry about figuring out the articulation because you cannot see it. So again, same exact. You have the gloves, you'll have the wrists, everything spins, single joints. Just don't force anything. And I didn't run into any problem with the material getting caught in the joint, but don't raise it up too high. You don't want to split the seams, anything like that. So learn it before you go crazy. Same thing with the knees, the legs, all that jazz. But again, very, we'll say minimal in terms of the articulation, but suitable for a figure that is Earl Sinclair, the dinosaur. And then you have the segmented tail, the feet. Yeah, everything just looks good. He just looks good and he has a waist crunch that kind of works. So again, it's just a fun STCC exclusive for the old dinosaur shelf. Now, to see these two in action, you have the original release of Earl Sinclair. Then you have Captain Impressive, of which there is also We Say So Corp. Errol Sinclair hitting store shelves now as we speak. I haven't seen him just yet. But yes, same exact figure, except one's wearing cloth goods. In terms of pairing him up with baby Sinclair. Now, this is where I think they could have had a little bit more fun with the accessories. Perhaps a removable white mask or just a white mask for Earl to hold. Or better yet, a Captain Impressive action figure for baby Sinclair to put on his high chair. Perhaps in later dinosaur releases, we will see that. But that would have been the perfect accessory for a Captain Impressive action figure. Now, one thing that's kind of funny, in recent years, we've had the Jurassic League, and NECA Toys did do their own DC Comics action figures, along with Predator and Alien, that were SCC exclusives some years back. But it's fun to see all of these paired up. Batman, Earl Sinclair as Captain Impressive, Superman, Hal Jordan. It's a lot of fun. You'll have a lot of fun with this figure if you're a Dinosaurs fan. So that will wrap it up for my early look at the brand new Necatoys SDCC 2024 exclusive, Earl Sinclair as Captain Impressive from the Jim Henson's Dinosaurs line. And again, thank you to my friends over at NECA Toys for setting this out for the purposes of this video. Definitely give it a watch. Always, as I say, before you buy, make sure it's something you absolutely want. There's so much good stuff coming lately. It's getting harder and harder to get everything. So make those correct choices. If you're a Dinosaurs fan, I give it the thumbs up. I think this is a lot of fun. It's actually one of my favorite SCCC exclusives. When I saw that release, I go, oh, yeah, that's what I want to see. And I want to see more dinosaurs figures. I want the entire family. I want Mr. Richfield. I want everybody. That would be the ideal sitch. So if you are interested in more dinosaurs, definitely let them know down in the comments below. And as always, I'm curious to know what you guys think about this new figure. 
And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, stay tuned. We got a lot more Negatoys STCC exclusives to cover before the pre-sale happens next week, July 26th through the 28th. And when we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. Welcome back, everyone. Toysh is here, and I am back yet again for yet another early look at some San Diego Comic-Con 2024 exclusives. And this time it comes courtesy of my friends over at NECA Toys. We have the second in their lineup of six. The one, the only from Nosferatu. We have Count Orlock. This time being a Remco retro-inspired version on a cool card back. And yes, he does glow in the dark. And... Well, you just get a figure on a card, but it's creepy nonetheless, and it actually glows pretty dang good, I have to say. So if you want to keep him on the card, which I think a lot of people in this specific version are going to, yeah, you can see him glowing oh so good. On the back side of the card back, very simple, but you get a look at all the universal monsters that they have done thus far, with Nosferatu getting this now second release on a Remco retro card back. But it's still pretty cool nonetheless. Here's everyone involved with the creation of this figure. So thank you very much for that. As well as the barcode. But you're not going to need this because he will be available at San Diego Comic Con 2024 exclusively. Or starting June 26th through the 28th, you can head over to the NECAstore.com and pick one up for yourself. So. This is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee, get ready to sock some blood. This is an early look at the San Diego Comic-Con 2024 exclusive, the glow-in-the-dark Count Orlock Nosferatu on the Universal Monsters Remco Retro card back by NECA Toys. So here's the count all out of the packaging, and this video will be fairly simplistic because it is just a figure. It's a figure that glows in the dark. There's nothing much else to him, but you do get a well-sculpted, very creepy, very uh, Sandy Cohen eyebrowed out Count Orlock. It's, it's terrifying, <laughs> especially those teeth. But yes, the head, the hands, those will glow. The rest of the body, not so much. The neck included as well. But you get the basic articulation. But keep in mind, if you push it back too much, it'll knock into the collar, and then the head just pops off. It's not loose by any means, but it has a limit to where you can push the head back. The arms, fairly simplistic. Nothing at the bicep. You got single joints. They go up, they go down. They'll spin, of course, at the elbow, which that's enough articulation. And then you have the hands, which will go up, down, left, right. He's got those very spindly fingers, kind of Mr. Bloom style, but not much paint on this guy. He's just very simplistic. He has a waist. You can kind of sort of get some abs going in there, but it's not going to really do much. The legs kind of sort of hindered by his jacket. You can see that you can get them going back a lot more than going forward because you got the slits in the back. You got the knees single jointed. They'll spin. You got the feet of which, yeah, he's got a nice pair of Victorian Beetle boots going on. But other than that, yes, fairly simplistic glow in the dark. This as much as I say I like to open my figures for those of you grabbing this, this is most likely one you're going to want to keep on card back. Now, in juxtaposition to all the other Universal monsters that I have in my collection, from the Frankenstein to the Mummy to then, of course, Count Orlock, Dracula, I, I got to tell you, when kind of size comparing all of these, I was surprised by how tall Count Orlock is. And yes, he is supposed to be around seven foot one. I looked it up. But of course, that's not the only monster here. <laughs> we have... It's the new Pennywise, of course. And yes, if you are a NECA Toys fan, you got all the other horror figures, Count Orlock, this glow-in-the-dark version will fit in nicely. To look at all these other Batmen together, we have Dracula, Count Orlock, and of course, a NECA Toys Aliens vs. Predator Batman. Sure, those will go nicely. And if you caught my last video, we took an early look at Captain Impressive from their Dinosaurs toy line. So that's two down. We got four more to go, so stay tuned. We'll have a lot more STC exclusives to check out. So 
that is going to wrap it up for my early look at the brand new NECA toys from their Universal Monsters line, the San Diego Comic Con 2024 exclusive, the Glow in the Dark Count Orlock from Nosferatu. And I think they did a great job in terms of what you are getting. This is not something mind blowing. This may not be something that you absolutely need for your Universal Monsters collection, but it's a nice retro nod to things of the past. And if anything, while he doesn't really have much to him in the way of accessories, it's a figure, retro card back, it glows in the dark. That's really all you need it to be. But you've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Nosferatu. And thank you again to my friends over at Toys for setting this out for the purposes of this video. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most important, remember, they did the mash. They did the monster mash. And that's that in of itself is part of the fun of having all these figures on your shelf. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. Oh, welcome back everyone. Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again for yet another early look at a brand new San Diego Comic-Con 2024 exclusive. And this comes courtesy of my friends over at NECA Toys from the Hulu movie Prey, which is in the Predator series. This is their ultimate camo reveal Predator, and in case you were wondering what movie it's from, yes, it's Prey, because it's all over the box. Now, this is a slipcase cover, of which it reveals, get it, slowly reveals, just like in the movie, the Predator, and what a Predator he was. On the back side of the box, you get gorgeous photos of the figure you're about to enjoy. Here's everything inside the box. There's about 24 separate accessories, which is quite impressive, and then also a couple instructions just showing you how to attach everything, but I'll show you all that myself. Here's everyone involved with the creation of this figure, and as always, thank you very much for that. And here's the barcode. Now, you're not gonna need this because it's a San Diego Comic-Con 2024 exclusive, and you can grab it on the con floor at the NECA booth. If you're not gonna be attending San Diego Comic-Con starting June 26th through the 28th, you can head over to thenecastore.com and grab one for yourself. So, this is gonna be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is an early look at the brand new San Diego Comic-Con 2024 exclusive from the NECA Toys Prey action figure line, the ultimate camo reveal predator. And while I got all you Hulu subscribers here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube vids. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Why? We got old toys, we got new toys, we got daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you like. Like this Predator with all the tremens, all the accessories that you would need to outfit your ultimate camo reveal Predator. Say that all in one go. Now, he does come with a ton of extra hands. The hands are always painted nice, so you got hands for days. You'll never run out of hands. He's handy. So many hands in this box. <laughs> now, you do get inner swappable mandible jaws, which, hey, that's a nice touch. And they are presented in that clear plastic like the rest of this Predator's head. It's very simplistic. Pop the jaw down, pop this new jaw in, and bingo bango, you got yourself a screaming mandible head portrait. Now we got these really cool hook claws kind of deal. And I went back and watched the movie again for the umpteenth time, but these are something I didn't really remember. And then when I saw it, I go, oh, that's what those are. So there's kind of like these little hooks that pop out of his gauntlets and then he uses them to eviscerate everyone in the film. You also get his blades. Those are nicely done. Just simplistic silver plastic, but they simply slip into his gauntlets. And then, yeah, you can go to work on all those fur trappers if you so choose. Now, this is interesting. I immediately go, you know what? This has got to be uh, the little medication weapon. And yes, sure enough, it is. And it's got great paint to it for as tiny as it is. But if you need to administer any medical attention, you can definitely do so. Along with this gauntlet, it's a separate gauntlet. But if you remember the scene when he's going up against the fur trappers, he leaves the gauntlet. These things pop out and then... From afar, you see everything explode, and yes, he takes them all down. You also get the flintlock pistol, the same pistol that you see in Predator 2. Gorgeous detail on this. For as tiny as it is, great wash, great paint, one of the best accessories in the box, and it has little tiny little writing on it. And yes, in all those extra hands, he does have a hand that can hold and carry this flintlock pistol. Now, this 
is another great weapon. It's just a simplistic hatchet, but the detail on it is superb. And yes, the Predator can hold said hatchet. You also get two bombs. These are Predator bombs. When they explode, they do damage. And there's basically two variations on the hands, both of which can properly hold these bombs if you so choose. And you also get his Predator backpack, which has great paint, but the best part is it's got a magnet. I love action figures with magnets because you can just throw the magnetic backpack all over the back of this figure. There's really just two places to put it on him, but you get the idea. It's on there to stay. But I love the paint, slowly transitioning from clear to then tangible. Now you also get a bear trap with a real metal chain attached to it. It's very cool. The other day I was just thinking about it, like I don't have a bear, I needed it for something, but lo and behold now I have a trap, it has writing, says number six. You can have a lot of fun with this if you so choose. You can put it on your action figure's feet or you can put it on your predator's arm and then just chuck it at an enemy. Now, you get this adorable wolf puppy that was alive at one point, but yeah, NECA toys, you're sick. It's just, you sickos. It's the remnants of a wolf, like when he eviscerates that thing and pulls its head and just hangs, it's, it's all kinds of gruesome, but in terms of action figures and having a predator action figure, yes, they've done an amazing job at recapturing that classic, classic moment of killing the wolf and <laughs> raising its spinal cord high above its head. Now, if you want, just get rid of all that fur and just have the skull. Yeah, the neck of toys has your predator covered. And like I said, he has the proper hands to hold said wolf skull and wolf head. Pick your own wolf adventure. But the predator himself, when they showed photos for this for the San Diego Comic Con reveal about a week ago, it was one of those where I was like, pictures just don't do it justice. This is one that you really have to have in hand because it's like, what am I looking at here? The skull mask comes off, it's really awesome. Of course, the head is all clear plastic, but the minimal paint, the very digital look of him materializing is represented well. The mask situates very nicely. He's got long flowing predator dreadlocks, which unfortunately NECA did not include a comb, so I cannot comb my predator's dreadlocks. And amidst the dreads, you got all kinds of spikes underneath. And again, it looks great. And one thing to point out of mine on the instructions on the box, it says A, magnetic backpack, yada yada, B, belt hook holds collapsed combi stick. This predator doesn't come with a combi stick. I can't really see where this is supposed to attach. Perhaps mine got smushed, maybe the hooks aren't there, but yeah, there's really nothing on mine to do that. You do have the wolf skull, which, yeah, it's basically the same skull, but clear plastic. The feet have peg holes on the bottom. Again, the paint is just overall very cool. The gauntlets have all the detail. Everything that you would expect for a Predator figure from NECA Toys is represented well, and the articulation is pretty solid. I like the neck articulation on this thing, a very thick neck to then a ball-jointed head. You get a lot of movement. The hair does not get in the way at all, but it just makes for very dynamic poses, especially with a Predator roaring, holding up, wolf spinal cords and just the whole nine yards of the articulation works well for me. Double jointed, bicep, the hands, again, some nice ab articulation up, down, left, right, side to side. And yes, it will get kind of gappy the further you move it back, but why are you moving it back so far? You don't need to go to that extreme. Don't be so dramatic, but yes, plenty of articulation in his predator abs. The legs will kick out amidst his loincloth. That doesn't get in the way. He's got double jointed knees, part of which are pinned. The other parts, no. The feet, they'll move around. A-OK, -okay, up, down, left, right. You get the idea. Like I said, to get this predator into battle positions to fight other predators, or perhaps we'll get some other characters for him to battle, fingers crossed, later down the road. Yeah, it's pretty well done. Now, just to kind of see this predator of which now this is the third version next to a larger, larger Predator from the previous Predator movie. Yeah, he's still a pretty good size. Next to the NECA Toys Batman from the Alien vs. Predator line, I would say the bat with a bat is not going to be stopping this Predator very easy anytime soon. And yes, now that Disney owns not only Marvel, but the Alien and Predator franchises, you could definitely have this Predator going up against 
Wolverine. And for those of you continuing to watch, we've already taken a look at the Dinosaurs exclusive Captain Impressive and the Remco Retro Cardback Glow in the Dark Nosferatu figure. So this one will fit in nicely. I think it's the perfect San Diego Comic Con exclusive. Not something so detrimental to your collection. It's got great accessories, but again, it is another Predator, but for you Predator fans, I think you'll be stoked. So that will wrap it up for my early look at the brand new San Diego Comic Con 2024 exclusive, the ultimate camo reveal Predator from the awesome, awesome Predator movie, Prey. If you've not seen it, what are you doing? Go and watch it. Thank you again to my friends at NECA Toys for providing this figure for the purposes of this video. It's gruesome. It's got a ton of accessories. It's not going to be detrimental to your collection if you don't get it, but it's a pretty stellar figure on its own. So you've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Prey and Predator, and I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, when it comes to aliens and it comes to Predators... Negatoys really just always knocks it out of the park. Yeah, they make a lot of them, but there's only so many per movie. You got to do something with it. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. Oh, welcome back, everyone. Toys is here, and I am back yet again for, yes, another early look at an upcoming San Diego Comic-Con 2024 exclusive. And this time it comes courtesy of my friends over at Negatoys from the old classic 80s television show, Alf... We all remember Gordon Shumway. Yeah, he's back with a second round of his Comic-Con shenanigans. He loved Comic-Con so much last year, he's finally taken to cosplaying. And cosplaying he is, because he's all decked out in his super attire. It's not a bird, it's not a plane. Why, it's Super Alf, and I love the little flappy opening. You can see the figure inside. Now, I would say this is... Probably one of the most perfect San Diego Comic-Con exclusives, much like the ALF from last year. If you're not a huge action figure collector, if you're not really a collector at all, but you want something that reminds you of perhaps your first time going to Comic-Con, or your 30th time going to Comic-Con, as in my case. And yeah, I would say that'd be the ideal collectible for your shelf. Get it going in one of your Skype meetings. Put it in the background. People go, what is that? And you go, oh, yeah. <laughs> Why, that's Alf. Ah, now, here's everything that this figure will come with, along with everyone involved with the creation of this figure. So, as always, thank you very much for that. Now, if you head over to Blainer Things over on Instagram, he and Thomas Quinn will take you on a rundown of all the thought process and the dealings and the creativity that went in to creating this San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. That's definitely cool. I'll put the links down in the description below. And, of course, here's the barcode, but you're not going to need that because, yes, ALF is a true San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. So if you are attending the con, you can head over to the NECA booth and grab one for yourself. Otherwise, starting June 26th through the 28th, you can head over to the NECAstore.com and pick up a Super ALF for yourself. So this is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, hide your cats. I'm not even joking. He is a ravenous Wild Alien. This is an early look at the brand new San Diego Comic Con 2024 exclusive Super Alf by NECA Toys. So now here's everything out of the packaging, and I would say that it's just the perfect amount of accessories, but the accessories themselves have so much charm to them that it's pure Comic-Con magic. Now, of course, you're going to get a bevy of extra hands. You've got furry, fisted hands. You've, of course, got pointy hands, and then oh, always my personal favorite, the thumbs up hand. Now, you do get a selfie stick with a photo of Alf already taken, and that's quite cool. But the selfie stick itself is just very unique. It does not extend, but it does have articulation where the camera is, and I love that you can just kind of position that. This will make for some fun photos, I'm just gonna say. I don't have a selfie stick accessory for any of my figures, so that itself uh, opens up a whole new way of, of just creativity, I'm sure, over on my socials. And yes, part of the fun is taking photos. And 
It's exactly what you see on the camera. Don't forget, it does flip when you take a selfie. So, yes, the picture is correct on the phone. You also get a poster of Super Alf. Apparently, Alf has a booth this year at SDCC, and he's hawking his wares. And it feels like a tiny miniature poster, except that you really can't roll it up like you'd want. You're going to damage it, ultimately, because he does come with a poster tube, and that is a mainstay for anybody walking around San Diego Comic-Con, the lid even opens. It's perfect. It's one of the coolest accessories next to the selfie stick. It's just perfection through and through. But like I said, if you want to fold up the poster, you could slip the poster in there, I suppose. But I like that with the various hands that Alf comes with, he can hold the poster and he can pose or you can put the poster tube on him. And what is fun for the poster tube, if you want to stick these stickers all over, you get a cool sticker sheet with some clever nods to everything Alf, Comic-Con, free cat food, yes, Deadpool, Captain America, Wonder Woman, they're all represented. No problem whatsoever, as the sticker says. But Circle gets the square because Alf is just a lot of fun. So it's the Alf body that we've seen with a bunch of different Alf releases. Count how many times I say Alf in this video. He's got his cool Clodhopper Converse going on, nice treads on the bottom. He's got peg holes. He has a full cloth goods costume. And what is appealing to me about this is kind of like Bartman, right? Remember the old Simpsons episode where Bart goes to the Bymon Sci-Fi Con and he goes, oh, I'm Bartman. Well, Alf showed up as Alf Man or Super Alf. And it's just a homemade costume complete with a cape with a bendy wire. It's not the strongest of bendy wires, but it's a very nice high quality cape. It's very heavy. It's almost like a blanket, like that is what he cut up and put around his neck. He's got basically a belt, a woman's belt, or you could say just a, a rather large weightlifter's belt for his utility belts. The costume is all sewn really nice. Just go easy at first. Much like I said about the Earl Sinclair Captain Impressive, get to know the articulation before you just start kind of moving it all around. You don't want to twist anything wrong. You don't want to get any of the fabric caught in the joints. It's a little bit of a waste. And again, I love the Jimbo Jones cord as his belt around his waist. Plenty of articulation in the head, and I love the fact that his mouth opens and closes. I think that's a nice touch. You get Alf a talking, have the jaw open, and when you kind of put the neck forward, it looks like he's talking. He's a Muppet from space, whatever Alf is at this point. The legs will kick out. You got single jointed knees. They'll spin at the knee. The big old converse will rotate. Again, for the type of character that is Alf, and let alone Super Alf, you can get his arms going all the way up and get him flying away. And that's what I like about these Alfs. Last year's San Diego Comic-Con exclusive from NECA Toys was one of my favorites that any company did. It's just pure Comic-Con fun. And much like that one before, this one is now. And likewise, being that he is a super elf, you can have him team up with the Justice League. Uh, perhaps there's a cat in a tree and, well, Alf is, quote unquote, trying to help it. Ah, now, if you don't want to go the actual superhero route, you can have a lot of fun with the selfie stick and have it to be just a bunch of cosplayers hanging out taking photos. Sky's the limits with these accessories. And yes, this is the fourth NECA Toys SDCC 2024 exclusive that we have taken a look at thus far. We have two more to go. But again, like all the ones you see before you, ALF is not detrimental to any collection. It's just a fun San Diego Comic-Con collectible to grab if you are attending San Diego Comic-Con. So that will wrap it up for my early look at the Super ALF San Diego Comic-Con 2024 exclusive by NECA Toys. And again, thank you to my friends over at NECA for sending this out for the purposes of this video. I like the cloth goods. I love the accessories. Those can also be used with other figures, but it just embodies the idea of cosplaying, dressing up as a superhero, DIYing it yourself, having your selfie stick, taking photos, getting the posters, walking around the booth. Yes, they nailed it. This is fun. It's just goofy. It's Alf through and through. And that's why I love it. So, you've heard my thoughts. Now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything. Alf, 
And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, well, he went casually last year. Now he's cosplayed. So then next year, he's got to go full furry suit, right? Just cat costume Alf all the way. When he does, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. Yo, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I am back yet again for yet another early look at an upcoming San Diego Comic-Con 2024 exclusive, and today it comes courtesy of my friends over at NECA Toys from the 1980s sci-fi classic Flash Gordon. We have this exclusive deluxe set featuring the Wood Beast Challenge, and I'm being 100% honest with you and saying I am not the guy to go to for Flash Gordon, but I watched this scene, and yeah, it's pretty terrifying. There's a Muppet in there. You get, you get it. It's it's a whole lot of bat poop craziness, but there's quite a bit in the box. There's a giant tree with a monster in it. As a heads up to all you future STCC goers who want to pick up this set, if I can give you any piece of advice from all my years of walking around Comic-Con, you want to be hands-free. You don't want to be walking around with bags or anything to be cumbersome to you. You want a, a brisk walk. You want to be able to explore. This box is huge. It's about four NECA Toys STCC figures wide. So if you have a hotel room or if you have a car in the parking garage, if you're going to grab it early, make sure it goes into one of those spots because you want a hands-free experience for STCC. Or else, better yet, just wait till the end of the day. Maybe you're out and you're going to go check out Filippi's Pizza or Not Not Taco, something like that. But you get the idea. Don't wait. Don't, don't carry it around all day. The actual box itself has beautiful photography of all the figures and the tree stump monsters and everything else you're about to enjoy. You can read up on Flash Gordon if you'd like. But yeah, you get the general idea. It's a test of bravery and this thing is going to kill you if it stinks. You picked the wrong hole. Here's everything inside this box. And here's everyone involved with the creation of this figure. So as always, thank you very much for that. Here's the barcode. Not going to need it. As I've said, every single video so far of these NECA Toys exclusives, but you can grab it on the con floor at the NECA booth during Comic-Con, or if you're sitting Comic-Con out this year, you can head to the NECAstore.com and pick it up during their pre-sale of June 26th through the 28th. So I would say you should be good to go. If you're a Flash Gordon fan, it's probably right up your alley. But in the meantime, this is going to be an absolute blast. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is an early look at the brand new STCC 2024 exclusive Flash Gordon during his Wood Beast Challenge Deluxe Action Figure Box Set by NECA Toys. So if you're still here after all of that, here's everything taken out of the packaging. You get a giant accessory, you get a figure, you get a couple swoop swap out pieces and a eyeball scorpion monster, but he does come with a pair of extra fisted hands. They're nicely done. It's just a pair of fisted hands, not too shabby, along with two extra head portraits of which, help me out here. You're looking at these, I see the subtle differences, but I think the one from the box, the more like, yeah, I just stuck my hand in a tree stump with a potential monster and there would have been more suited for this set because they look the same. You also have a sword. It's got eyes and horns. The hilt is black and gold. You got a silver blade to it. Nicely done, nicely painted. You also get a whip. I don't know why you're saying whip so weird, but you have a long string on the whip part, which is again, painted nicely so you can whip your enemies into submission, and yes, thank God, Flash Gordon has extra hands, of which if you just don't want the fisted hands, you got the item holding hands. But truth be told, I think for a lot of you Flash Gordon fans, this will be the main event, and I know some of you are salivating out there wishing that this was in fact a popcorn bucket. <laughs> but you get the idea, it's a giant tree stump, there's multiple holes all over it, and it's got a flat back so you can place it against your shelf for easy displayability options. But it is equally as terrifying. It's kind of like an action figure representation of trypophobia, right? You can put your finger in there, I guess, if you just do it. No, my God. But it's really awesome in that you can actually put things in there <laughs> if you want. I mean, like creatures or things that you could kind of pop out, something like that. Get your minds out of the gutter. But yes, that would be my face that Flash Gordon has when anybody said, hey, there's like this monster in here that'll kill you with a sting. 
but just pick a hole and put your arm into it. Thankfully, though, uh, there was no monster in mine. Mine was filled with M&Ms. However, that being said, the monster itself comes with this set, and it's just the wood beast monster, and it's quite terrifying. It's like something out of alien movies, kind of xenomorphy, face huggery. It's got the interesting bottom to it. It looks very wet. It's gross. It's disgusting. It's got a little bit of articulation in the tail, mostly side to side. I don't think it goes back. If it goes back, I feel like I'm forcing it. Be very careful with it. I'm just going to say side to side, most definitely. But it's really well done. The paint brings this thing to life. So again, for me, if somebody said, hey, stick your hand in this hole and don't get stung, I'm going to pull my sword out. And not only that, but I am literally going to stab every single hole in this wood tree thing until that thing is dead. <laughs> and truth be told, I wouldn't just stop there. I would literally get fire and burn this thing to the ground to get rid of that spider scorpion eyeball monster. But if you were wondering, how does this Flash Gordon square up next to other NECA toys offerings like the Phantom or Batman? He's a little bit too tall, a little bit more proportionally different than some of the other figures. So it's kind of their own thing. But the tree beast monster is very Star Wars to me. So maybe you don't like Flash Gordon, but maybe you want it for a Star Wars display. I could definitely see that. And if you have missed the other ones, we've taken a look at all these other NECA toys, STCC exclusives thus far. Again, falling into that realm this year of this Flash Gordon being not too detrimental to your collection, being very poignant. I hear a lot of people who Love Flash Gordon, specifically talking about this scene, scared them as a child. So if you're at Comic-Con and you see the NECA Toys booth, yeah, you might want to grab it. It might be right up your alley. So that will wrap it up for my early look at the brand new San Diego Comic-Con 2024 exclusive Flash Gordon and the challenge of the Wood Beast monster scorpion spider. God, it's awful, but oh so cool. It's terrifying, but the way that NECA Toys makes fun terrifying. So again, if you want it, pre-sale June 26th through the 28th on thenextdoor.com, or if you're Comic-Con, you can stop by their booth and grab it. So you've heard my thoughts. Now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Flash Gordon. And I'm gonna leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most important, remember, and as I've said, as I'm not a Flash Gordon fan, I have a really good friend who is, so, you know who you are. Expect a package coming very soon. When they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. Yo, welcome back everyone. Toys is here, and I am back yet again for yet another early look at an upcoming San Diego Comic-Con 2024 exclusive, and this time it comes courtesy of my friends over at NECA Toys. We've looked at five STCC exclusives from NECA Toys, but we finally come to the last. This is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2-pack featuring the first Turtles. And yes, Eastman and Laird's original sketches brought to life. And I gotta say, I don't know what kind of magic, what kind of witchcraft I'm looking at here, but this lenticular cover that's on the back of the box, all I'm gonna say is gonna be kind of hard to toss this. Somehow, some way, I will be saving this, but I love seeing how everything changes as you move around. Now, this of course is a slip case cover and you get the two turtles front and center in a nice window box. So you get to see Eastman's, you get to see Laird's version. And truth be told, this is a real love letter to both of these creators. It's essentially them in a box and I love that. On the back side, you're gonna get gorgeous photography, which that's always nice and helping me pose them out. I will say that, I go, oh yeah, yeah, you could totally do that. You get to see all these characters that they've done so far, including some new ones that are coming. Ah, and here's everyone involved with the creation of these figures, so thank you very much for that. And here's the barcode. Once again, you're not gonna need it because these are San Diego Comic-Con 2024 exclusives. So if you go to the convention, you can grab them at the NECA booth or if you're not attending SDCC, starting June 26th through the 28th, you can head over to the NECAstore.com and pick up a set for yourself. So this is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is an early look at the brand new San Diego Comic-Con 2024 NECA Toys exclusive, 
from the Eastman and Laird's TMNT Mirage Comics toy line, The First Turtles. And so now here's everything taken out of the packaging. Multiple weapons, multiple head portraits. All of the weapons are interchangeable between each style of Ninja Turtle here. You've got Mikey, Raph, Leo, Donnie, but realistically, you've got the precursor to anything that we know now with Ninja Turtles, and that's the beauty of this two-pack. So if you want to get four of these two-packs, you could do that, essentially. We'll kick it off with the Kevin Eastman Turtle. He comes with these big old open hands, and these are the days of which they were most related to turtles as opposed to Turtles that we get now, even in the head portraits right here. The bandana has a little bit of articulation. That's nice to see. The greens, the reds, everything is very vibrant. This is more of the eh, kind of angry head, which that's a nice touch. You get a pair of katana. Again, Leonardo's, perhaps, one day. I like how the blades have a little segment in it, and I love just the paint, the yellows, the reds. They just look great. Along with this Tonfa stick, brown has the black accents, little yellow tip to the handle. I dig it. Again, very much the beginnings of the Ninja Turtles and weapons that you would see later on with other variations like Rise of the TMNT. The actual action figure himself. Now again, there is no designated character, essentially, yes, because he has nunchucks on his arms, you could say, oh, that's Michelangelo, but it's not. It's just, hey, I'm thinking of Ninja Turtles, let's draw it, here's what I'm going to come up with. The colors, the accents, the black marks, everything about this is fantastic, but Oh, so different to things that we now see for anything TMNT. And that is part of the charm of this set. To debut at Comic-Con, how Ninja Turtles was introduced to everyone as a comic book. It's very befitting. There's plenty of articulation in the long neck of his along with the head. The arms will go all the way up. There's not going to be anything in way of a bicep, but in his single jointed elbows, they will spin. So that's enough articulation in that sense. The hands will rotate and move around no problem. But keep in mind, he does have this pair of nunchucks right here that's attached to his wristband. It simply just clips in there. And for the most part, they stay in, no problemo, but often, yes. When you go to move the hands around, it will kind of sort of knock into the nunchuck, so just keep that in mind. They will fall out from time to time. I love the front of his shell, the sides right here. There's no belt. Again, very different to what we know now for the Ninja Turtles. The legs will really just kind of kick off to the side. The front part of the shell is a little bit softer, so you kind of get some movement going forward, but... Not so much back, and he has very tiny knees. It's basically his foot and knee combined, but that matches the artwork. He's got peg holes on the bottom of his feet, but I like that. Again, very different, very unique, very much a Ninja Turtle in the earliest sense. And yes, he does have some tail articulation. It will essentially swivel. I'm glad over time we lost the tails, the silhouettes, we're not doing anyone any favors. He has a semblance of a waist. Perhaps there's something in there. The shell is just so stylized. It just screams the original sketch TMNT. Now to move on to the Peter Laird version, he comes with tiny little hands, outstretched of course. You're not gonna hold anything with these particular hands, that's for sure. You do get the extra head portrait, which I like Laird's stylized version more with the beak type nose. I think that gives a little bit more personality. And then at the end of the day, we see Eastman and Laird's combining these to what we see with the turtles nowadays. You get a pair of Psy. Again, nicely detailed, painted beautifully. You got the black accent marks, red, yellows. It all works. Then you have an original styled bow where the wrappings were on one side as opposed to now being in the middle has a nice brown to it. You got the black accent marks. That's a nice Donatello bow staff. You got a pair of nunchucks. That's cool. You got the real metal chain. Again, red, a little bit of gray paint to them. They move around oh so nicely. A lot of nunchucks 
in this set, that's for sure, including the spinny nunchuck. You only get one of these. It is a gimmick that we have seen before with prior release TMNT. Has a little bit of articulation there, but effectively creates the comic book look of a spinning nunchuck. But I totally like that for display purposes. And yes, you can detach this if you'd like, although there's not really anything in this set to put it on, but you can detach if you so choose. But again, the black amidst the red, it's just nice, it's cool, it's very interesting to say the least. Now, with Peter Laird's version of this Ninja Turtle, again, you have that long nose, very beaked out look for a turtle, very long neck. This version being a lot more lanky, we'll just say, a lot more segments in the front of his shell, a lot less massive than Kevin Eastman's version, but still retaining the nunchucks that are attached to the wrist guard, and yes, those are removable as well, although Kevin Eastman's has chains as opposed to this one not having chains. So little differences. I love the shell on this one. It has texture bumps. The black accents really help bring that to life. It's very interesting. You got a little tail articulation, of course. The neck, double segmented. Very cool. A lot of movements out of this. Get him looking all the way up, looking down side to side. You're not going to have any articulation problems with the neck. The arms will go all the way up. Nothing again at the bicep. Single joint spin at the elbow, the wrists. Again, the nunchucks really aren't going to get in the way. No belts, nothing like that at this point in the creation process. The legs, this one has a much harder front part of the shell, so they're really only going to go off to the side. Single jointed knees, they'll spin at the knee, and then you have the feet articulation with the peg holes on the bottom. So again, they're a little bit more minimally articulated, but very befitting of these original sketches. This is not supposed to be totally crazy, just off the wall. The main goal for me here is to get them into the original sketch positions, and I'm just hoping we can do that with all of the weapons. Again, Leonardo, Raphael, or are they? They're simply precursors to the characters that we know and love nowadays. These could both be Michelangelo if you really wanted them to be. The sky is the limit. Only your imagination can tell you which turtle you're actually looking at. And again, it's a nice nod to the original comic book Mirage where you really didn't know the difference between the turtles unless they were holding weapons. So again, very interesting, very cool. Swip swap the weapons at your leisure. But they just display oh so well, and they're very different for a TMNT collection. But I am happy to say, as I was sincerely hoping for, that yes, you can beautifully recreate those sketches, minus all the weapons, just the actual look of Kevin Eastman's version of the Sketch Turtle and Peter Laird's version of the Sketch Turtle. They're beautifully recreated. NECA has once again understood the assignment and aced the Ninja Turtles. But to see what's come before, to see what we have now, even though this is the reverse, essentially, you get to see all these other NECA toys, TMNT offerings, and they just look stellar all together. They're fantastic. They'll fit rather well with your TMNT collection as something very different and very unique. And yes, we have seen versions of these sketches done in action figure, PVC, statuesque form before. But it's nice that NECA has finally tackled these and added a little articulation to the mix. And then to see how these stack up to the original Playmates offerings, including the newest Playmates sketch turtles, which are fantastic, by the way. It's just a lot of fun. If you're a Ninja Turtle fan, you're on cloud nine. There is literally something for everyone. We have never eaten so well. Now, in terms of pairing them up with other characters, comic book characters, such as Batman, which we have seen the TMNT team up with before, sure. You could kind of fudge those together. Daredevil, that's a big one. Would love to see that official crossover one of these days. If you don't know the lore behind Daredevil with the TMNT, definitely check it out for yourself. But the big one, of course, being Jack Kirby. Now, if you know the history with Jack Kirby and Eastman and Laird's love of Jack Kirby artwork and how this all kind of ties into the TMNT, we just got a NECA Toys Jack Kirby figure. But I'm going to say... That what I would like to see for the next San Diego Comic-Con exclusive next year, TMNT, 
No more TMNT turtles, characters and such. I want to see a Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird action figure two pack. I think that that would be stellar. They would go so well with this Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, Todd McFarlane, all the comic book artist greats who have gotten action figures over the years. That would just be stellar. And so with that, we have wrapped up all six San Diego Comic-Con 2024 NECA Toys exclusives. And I want to say a special thank you again to the folks over at NECA Toys for sending these out for the purposes of this video. And I want to say a huge thank you to everyone out there who continues to watch and supports all of my social channels. This is my eighth year doing this. This has been one fantastic, crazy year after another, but believe it or not, it's my 30th year now going to San Diego Comic-Con. So if this is your first year or if you've never been, maybe you plan to go in the future, hit me up down in the comments below. If you ever have any questions, I can even tell you the best places to go eat. You will not be disappointed. But in terms of all these SDCC exclusives, I think NECA has hit that sweet spot where none of these are going to be too detrimental to your collection if you don't get them. But again, if you want them but aren't attending the con, you can head over to their website June 26th through the 28th and grab them on the NECA store.com and for those of you going to comic-con you know the drill you just head over to the NECA booth stand in line for a little bit look at all the upcoming figures in those giant glass cases and just froth at the mouth like I do and go oh yeah that's that's the good stuff so again thank you all for watching I'm gonna leave you guys with that as always drink some great coffee eat some great food but most importantly remember it's almost a month baby we'll all be back in San Diego for comic-con and I cannot wait. And when we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.